Welcome to this heavy M tutorial. Let's talk about the sequencer. Located at the bottom of the interface, the sequencer hosts three modules. The sequences module, the timeline, and the audio analysis module. In this tutorial, we will cover how to manage and organize sequences, as well as the different options for playback. Sequences are the objects that let you divide your mapping in multiple scenes. In each sequence, you are able to add different effects, shapes, or even play different media. A sequence can be in three different states. If its edit button is toggled on, then it is shown and editable in the canvas. If its style is yellow, then it is currently rendered in the output. The same sequence can be both the edited and the played sequence. In this case, it is both played in the output and previewed in the canvas. Click on the tile of a sequence to play and edit it at the same time. If you click on an empty cell though, there will be no played sequence and the rendering is blacked out. Double click on the plus button to add and play a new sequence. As you can see, the drawing is the same as sequence 2. If you want to use another set of shapes, you need to use another map. We won't go into details regarding maps here, but know that you can choose or create a new map from the sequence settings. As for content, you can see that effects are not the same as sequence 2, so we can have a totally different style in sequence 3 and it won't affect sequence 2. To help differentiate sequences, you can change their position in the grid and give them a color, a title and a comment. When a sequence is being edited, these properties appear in the settings panel on the right. Sequences can also be organized in tabs, click on the plus icon to add a new tab, and double click on the title to rename it. In short, sequence organization is pretty free. For instance, if you use a MIDI controller with pads to trigger sequences, you can replicate the grid of the controller to find sequences easily. As we've seen, sequences can be played manually, but Heavium also offers two options for automated playback, autopilot, and the timeline. Autopilot is a quick to set up playback mode that is directly integrated in the sequences module. Turn it on from the header of the module and it will go through the list of sequences in a tab and play them one after the other, according to a set step. This step can be adjusted via the trigger next setting. It can be a duration in time or beat, or you can tell Autopilot to skip sequences when a media reaches its end, via the source option. Autopilot offers a few additional settings, such as direction, which allows you to choose if it reads the sequences from left to right or randomly in the tab. Autopilot is pretty flexible. It doesn't prevent you from manually changing the played sequence. If you do, it will just start a new step and resume playback from this sequence on. It also allows for changes on the fly. If you temporarily want to remove a sequence from the queue while Autopilot is running, simply right-click it and choose Mark as Draft. The timeline allows you to program a series of automated actions with precise timings. From the settings, you can add an audio file and define the length of the timeline. The waveform of the audio file will be displayed on the track. Actions are then set up by placing cues along the track and configuring the event they should trigger. Possible actions include play a sequence or stop. The playback of sequences can thus be automated. The easiest way to add a play cue is to drag and drop a sequence directly onto the timeline and adjust its position precisely with keyboard arrows. The timestamp can also be set from the settings of the selected cue, which you will find in the panel on the right. There, you'll also get options to change the name, color, and action of the cue. Just hit play once everything is set up to see the result. By default, the timeline loops infinitely. If you want it to stop at the end of the track, simply add a stop cue there. Sequences have one last setting that beginners should know about, transitions. Each sequence can have its own unique start transition, with an adjustable duration. There are many choices and some of them even have additional customization parameters. Transitions are triggered any time their sequence is played, 
whether it is manually or via automated playback. That's it for this introduction to the HeavyM sequencer. If you need advanced tutorials on other sequences settings, like maps, audio, or shaders, head to our help center to find articles or videos on these subjects. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more HeavyM content.